Today is going to be our service remembering Anzac Day. Uh, we're going to start off with a video recording uh, with someone explaining Anzac better than I can. Hello everyone. Today we're talking about a very special day. We're going to be remembering some very special people. We're going to be talking all about Anzac Day. What does Anzac stand for? I bet that some of you right then have just said it out loud. Australia, New Zealand Army Corps. In Australia and New Zealand, we have Anzac Day on the 25th of April every year. Originally, Anzac Day was to remember those Australians and New Zealanders that fought in Gallipoli in the World War I. But now we use it to remember all of those Australians and New Zealanders that have fought in any war. In 1915, Australian and New Zealand soldiers set out to help capture the Gallipoli Peninsula to open the way to the Black Sea for the Allied navies. The point was to take control over a place called Constantinople, which in modern day is Istanbul in Turkey. The people who lived there were part of the Ottoman Empire, which was an ally of Germany during the war. The Anzacs landed at Gallipoli on the 25th of April. It was not what they thought it would be, and it did not go the way that had been planned. There was fighting and loss for eight months. At the end of 1915, the Anzacs and the Allied forces left. Both sides were hit hard and suffered huge casualties. The Allied casualties included 21,255 from the United Kingdom, an estimated 10,000 soldiers that had passed away from France, 8,709 from Australia, 2,721 from New Zealand, and 1,358 from British India. Not many countries get to share a national day together, but there has been a bond between New Zealand and Australia ever since. Even though there is a little bit of rivalry any time there is a sports match on, we will always remember what the soldiers went through and how the two countries together made a big difference. A lot of people died during World War I and in a lot of wars since. The remembrance for Anzac looks at all of those people who sacrifice and to sacrifice is to give up. Uh, and in this case, they gave up their lives for our benefit. Uh, Charlie's going to read a Bible verse that again just reminds us that uh, we can turn to peace rather than focus on war. So the line about turning uh, our swords into plowshares is just a reminder that we can turn weapons of war into things that are helpful. After Charlie's Bible reading, uh, we'll listen to Amazing Grace, a wonderful hymn that has been uh, rewritten by Hillsong Church. And there again, uh, telling us of the hope that we get from the grace of God. And grace is um, that special blessing that we get even when we don't deserve it. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. Many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that, may we, so that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge the nations and will settle arguments for many people. They will beat their swords into plowshares and take their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore.
an extract from a poem that was written uh, just at the start of World War I. It's called An Ode to the Fallen and it is a reminder uh, of just how painful the sacrifice, that giving up of one's life for other people. Uh, I invite you to take a moment of silence uh, after we've listened to the last post. And the last post is a trumpet solo where a single army piper, uh, trumpeter uh, is playing a very special lament. A lament is like a cry out to people who have fallen. And after that uh, last post, we'll just take a moment uh, to either pray or to think in silence about that sacrifice. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all uh, forevermore. And to our fallen, we appreciate your sacrifice and we remember you. For the Fallen. Parts of this poem are written by Robert Lawrence Binion. They went with songs to the battle. They were young. Straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. As the stars that shall be bright, when we are dust, moving in marches upon the heavenly plain, is the stars that are starry in our darkness. To the end, to the end they remain. We will remember them. <laughs> 